Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar AI, and this is a follow-up to my deep dive on textures, which I did right there in that video. And this video is about tips and tricks to get the most out of using textures in your images in Luminar AI. Let's hit it. I've got this photo here, and this is from Cadillac Ranch in uh, Amarillo, Texas, along Route 66. It's just kind of fun, to be honest. So um, the first thing I want to do is actually go into Enhance AI, and I'm going to take Accent AI just to 100 because the photo is just way too dark and all that. And I'm just going to go ahead and just bump it all the way up just because I feel like it, right? So uh, basically started like that, ended like that. I did erase a couple of little towers over there prior to starting the video. So what, what I want to do is share kind of some ideas, things I think about, and just kind of my thought process when I apply a texture to an image. So I'm going to click plus add and choose texture. And in that deep dive video, you saw that you can add your own textures and that sort of thing. So I've already got some in here. And the first one I'm going to add, I got to check my notes here, is this grungy wall. It's from my own texture collection that I sell on my blog, which is in a link down below. So the first thing that I think about is the blend. Like that's the thing you got to get right. That's kind of the, to me, the key element of adding a texture to a photo is you got to get it blended right. And as you can see, this is not blended right. Um, so the first thing I do is reduce the opacity because it gives me a better chance to see that the texture in, uh, you know, in the base photo, right? Because at a hundred, it's not blended at all. Um, and in fact, it's not really blended at all. Now I've just reduced the opacity of this texture layer, if you will, or texture overlay. But what I generally do is I will reduce the opacity to somewhere in the 25 or so range. I'll go with 25 here just to look at it because what I want to do is get a sense of the scene and you'll probably know this if you planned to add a texture to your photo but I want to look at it and think you know where do I want the texture to apply because you can stick a texture on reduce the opacity like that and be done and honestly it might work for you for me though there's some things that I think about the first thing is the sky I actually and you know let me just turn this off you know, that's a decent sunset. It's not amazing, but it's certainly better than a lot of sunsets I've seen uh, and worse than others for sure. But, you know, it's not bad. So I don't necessarily recommend covering up beautiful sunsets. However, I also like to point out that you can use what I consider a pretty nice sunset like this one, still put a texture in it and still have a nice looking photo. So don't hesitate to um, experiment even with something that you might consider too pretty because when I first started using textures, it was mostly because I wanted to cover up a really boring sky. And there's nothing wrong with that, and I do it plenty of the time. And in fact, in that deep dive video that I pointed to, there was no sky. It was just plain gray, and a texture added, I think, some nice interest to the photo. So that is something that you can do, but don't be afraid to add them even to skies. And so to go back to the point here about this tip, the blend is really important because when I look at this photo, what I don't really care about having a whole lot of texture on is the cars and some of the ground, right? Um, it's just, it's got enough texture already, to be honest. Those cars are... are there's a lot going on. I mean, you know, old Cadillac's buried nose first in the ground, completely covered in graffiti. I'm sure underneath the graffiti, it's just, you know, you know, tons of rust. But um, I still want to apply the texture with a mask. And so there's really two things I think about when I'm blending, and that's mask and blend mode, okay? So for me, mask is where in the photo is the texture actually gonna apply, and more importantly, perhaps, where is it not going to apply? And then the blend mode for me is how is it going to be blended in the area where I've masked it? So they kind of go together. They're not mutually exclusive. They're a pair, in my opinion. The masking and the blend mode, they come together to help you get the texture in the right place and looking right with the photo. Okay, so a photo like this where I know I'm going to be covering up a bit of the sky, I'll go ahead and get the mask. And I generally will do the masking first, although it doesn't matter. You could do the blend mode first, and that would see... I'll let you see how the texture looks in the area where you want it, and then you can mask it in. It doesn't really matter. In this case, I already know that even if I don't change the blend mode from the default, which is normal, which if you watch that last video that I talked about, you, you realize blend mode is not, or excuse me, normal is not really a blend mode. It's just the texture sitting on top of the base photo at a different opacity. However, I already know that I like it like that because I'm going for a textured look. So I'm gonna go ahead and mask it first but you might want to do blend mode first. It'll just depend on the image. So I'm going to take a gradient mask and this is where I'm going to come in and I'm just going to, I'm going to drag for a little ways because I want to get kind of a broad kind of um, 
uh, this gradient zone here. Like, so to me, the area between the outer, uh, or I should say the top and the bottom line, that's the gradient zone because above that top line, you're getting all the texture from that top line to the center line, you're getting a reduced amount from the center line to the bottom, you're getting even more reduced. And then from the bottom and below, you're getting none. Um, so I might rotate this a little bit to kind of line up with the cars. And then I think I will leave it like that. And so if I just go into the show mask, you can kind of see basically that the sky is getting the majority of the texture and then it starts to fade here as I get into the cars. And then once I get into the dirt, I don't really see a reason. If you've got a section of photo that's really well textured already, I don't necessarily see a reason why I would add texture to that. It doesn't really do a lot for me. Um, so it, it might do it for you. This is just a personal opinion, but this is why I like to mask it in because I don't really see a benefit of seeing uh, of having a lot of texture in that ground. It's kind of got enough, you know, texture and kind of crispiness to it. And I'm really just trying to create a bit more of a, a look in the sky and that sort of thing. So now having done that, here's the other thing you can do. You can go back to this gradient mask and go to paint mask. And here's another thing that I recommend, another tip, and that is maybe come in here, get the erase uh, button uh, or, you know, brush. And then I might come down to like a 25% opacity and I might erase that texture at a low opacity from some parts of these cars. And again, that just is the same reason why I didn't put a lot of texture in the ground. And that is they've got enough texture already. These cars have a lot of character, a lot of texture. So I'm just going to erase it at a low opacity. I'm not completely going to remove it because what I don't want is a hard edge like you know, oh, texture coming all the way down. Oh, it hits the cars, no texture at all. I, I, that's why I did the gradient with kind of a fade. I want to just create that gradient zone where it kind of fades into the photo. And then I slightly erase it from some of the cars just so that the senses of the viewer don't get overwhelmed, right? It's highly uh, textured already because it's a rusty, cruddy old car. I mean, if you look at this stuff, it's just kind of a mess, right? And then on top of that, tons of color. And frankly, the color is part of the fun of it. And I want the color to come through. So that texture's kind of covering up the color a little bit as well. So again, another reason why I do that. So basically masking, big deal. Don't be afraid to experiment with the mask. Uh, you know, try a gradient mask, but also to brush some out, that sort of thing. All you're trying to do is just tell the texture, this is where you belong. And like I said, also perhaps more importantly, this is where you don't belong. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm gonna keep the opacity in the low 20s, like say 22. I'm actually gonna change the blend mode and I'm actually gonna go with luminosity. And luminosity basically gives me the texture without any of the color. So it has no color impact on the uh, the photo underneath it. So if I turn that off, there it is beforehand with his, uh, just the beautiful sunset and there it is with the texture on top of it. So I like that luminosity when you've got nice color like this to keep from impacting the color with whatever color may be uh, resident in the texture. I'm gonna pull the brightness down a little bit. I'm gonna go down maybe something about like that. And I think I'm good with the rest of it. I actually think I might drop the opacity to maybe about 20. I just want a light texture there. And then here's another tip, and that is don't hesitate to stack multiple textures to get kind of creative. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another texture. And in this case, I'm gonna add this Burl Grunge that I like so much. It's something that I downloaded on the web years ago, but it's a beautiful texture. I love it, I actually use it quite a bit. Once again, I'm gonna drop opacity. I'm gonna to go to about 20. Um, and that's giving me good visibility into the, uh, the image. And this time I'm going to go ahead and change the blend mode to color. And this was just experimentation, which I recommend you do, right? Just experiment, see kind of what comes up. Uh, and then I'm going to drop the, uh, the brightness as well. Maybe something about like that. Add a little contrast, call it something like that. And then some saturation as well. And I haven't masked this one yet, so I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to go ahead and get that gradient mask. Actually, you know what? I'm not. Um, I, I'm going to do the same thing. However, I've already got the mask down here. So you can copy the mask from this one and just paint it or paste it in the next one. So I'm going to click on that menu and I'm going to say copy. I'm going to go up here to the uh, new texture layer and I'm going to click paste. And I've just pasted that layer. There you go. Now the layer is the same uh, here as it was before. So if you're stacking textures and you've masked it in once, don't spend the time masking, uh, masking it a second time. Just copy and paste. So now this Burl Grunge texture has been applied in the exact same masking uh, in the exact same areas as the previous one. I've got my settings all right, and I think it looks good, right? So if I turn off these two um, textures, let me show you that. I wish I could do that without having to click into each one. I think I've, you know, I've got a nice looking photo, which is really just 
the uh, Accent AI at 100, but stick a little texture on there, gives it a little bit of interest, and then the second texture gives it a little bit more interest, a little bit of color as well, and I think it looks pretty nice. So that's another tip. Don't hesitate to experiment with stacking multiple textures, and also be aware that you can copy and paste the masks from one texture layer to another. And now the last tip that I have is um, to go edit the photo. So I did do Accent AI in the beginning, and that was simply because I wanted better visibility in this photo because it was kind of dark. I've seen a lot of people before, and I've done it myself, frankly, where you stick a texture on and you're like, oh, there's my photo because I've got the texture on it. But my opinion is go back now and do some additional editing. If you didn't do much before, I did the Accent AI, but what I want to do is go into the light tool and you know, kind of have a little bit of a play around. So I'm going to add some contrast to the overall image, something about like that. I'm going to pull the highlights down just a tad and the shadows up just a little bit, just creating a little bit more kind of visibility in the photo there. And then I'm going to go to Structure AI and I'm going to go ahead and bump that up. And that's just something I like to do in some photos anyway. I usually kind of mask it in or paint it in. Actually, I'm not going to go that high. I'm going to go a little bit lower, maybe like a 25. But all I'm doing is adding a little bit of crunch into the image, which is kind of amplifying the crunch that's on the cars. You can see the ground got a little crunchier and also uh, in the sky. So now what I could do, and in fact, I think I actually may do that, is copy that mask again, or excuse me, paste that mask again. I've already still got it copied. I'm gonna go ahead and paste that mask into structure, and that's gonna basically stick it in the same area as before and remove it from the ground because I felt like in the ground there, it was a little bit too much. And so there, I've just added this structure AI to the same areas where the textures were added. So basically, I've just crunched up the textures a little bit. I turn it off, there it is before, and then there it is again with the structure AI basically masked into the exact same places that the texture went. And the next thing I think I'm gonna do is just stick a little vignette on here simply because I kinda of like it. So I'm just gonna do something like that. Um, again, drawing the attention of the cars, although I think they're pretty much gonna get your attention as a viewer. You're gonna see this crazy, rusted, uh, super graffiti kind of stuff going on, but I think the vignette gives me a little bit better focus. Uh, I'm gonna give a little bit of inner light to pop those cars and maybe reduce the intensity of that vignette a little bit. And the only other thing I think I want to do is go back and get another local mask. This one's going to be a basic mask. And what I want to do here is get a gradient. And I'm going to drag the gradient right over here. And all I want to do is just kind of darken that area a little bit because I feel like it's a little bit too bright for my taste. So once I have the gradient mask positioned where I want it, which is really just that bottom left corner and you know some of the foreground, is uh, I can come over here. And by the way, you can hit the forward slash key to hide the mask. And all I want to do is just drop the exposure a little bit. And I don't want to go significantly. I just want to darken that a little bit because it is kind of empty. Not kind of, it is empty. Uh, it's basically dead space. So you don't want to go too dark and overdo it where it looks unnatural. I just kind of want to blend it in, which is one of the reasons I had kind of a wide-ish kind of gradient. But I just wanted to give it a little bit more darkness there. And that's really it. That's the edit, my friends. But more importantly, those are the tips and tricks and the things that I think about when I'm applying a texture to a photo using the tools here in Luminar AI. I think the combination of the blend mode and of course the masking is the best way to come at it in order to get the texture applied to the proper parts of the photo and in the proper way to get the look that you want. And then stacking multiple textures if it suits your image or your taste is great. And of course, wrapping it up with some additional editing. It's kind of how I go about using textures in Luminar AI. I hope it gives you some ideas and that sort of uh, thing. Thank you for watching, my friends. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you in the next video. And adios.